Welcome to CISO Interviews, where Affinia hosts cybersecurity executives sharing career advice, actionable insights, and tips so that you can enhance your career and succeed as well. Evgeny, so we're live. So uh, good to see you again. Um, now that you're in new capacity as a published author, can't wait, can't wait to hear about your book. Thank you. Thank you. This is the book. Thank you very much. I'm very, very happy to talk to you today talk about the book. It was definitely a very, very interesting journey to create how the book, how to, write the book. to write it. It's a kind of, it took me to write probably around nine months, almost like a baby, but it took me eight months before that to understand what I want to write and navigate to what exactly I want to be in the book. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I, I've talked to several people re somewhat recently who embarked on this journey of uh, writing, a, writing and publishing a book and it's such a huge commitment. So congrats. It's a, uh, I think I think for for ten people who start writing a book, probably one finishes. So it's uh, it's very impressive. And I, I you mentioned you self publishing, right? Yes, this is what actually it, it what took time. I was thinking in the beginning I have to find find someone that will help me publish, like a publisher. Mm -hmm. And the moment I realized I don't need self publishing, I switched to having an editor that will help me to kind of write it correctly because I had no experience writing a book. Almost the same mm -hmm. idea when you're doing a project in cybersecurity. If you're not sure exactly, you hire a special services company consulting. So the consulting mm -hmm. of writing the book and it definitely, definitely helped because I had ideas that potential were not correct. And in the same case, I had ideas. I pushed my editor and here I just thought, yes, this is why I need this in the book. Mm -hmm. So it was very interesting. I, I think it's amazing. So we'll definitely include the link to, uh, uh, probably Amazon page where, where, where people can go and buy it. I'm, I'm definitely buying one. So next time I see you, I want, I want you to sign, to sign a copy. So it's going to be a, a collector's edition signed by author, but Thank you. to, to from to frame the conversation, it's uh, basically a known problem, right? So a lot of people who uh, progress through the ranks in their career, uh, uh, having very deep technical skills, Often they get to a position within the organization of of seniority, and they find themselves needing soft skills as, as well. Am I framing framing the the main thrust of the uh, of the book correctly? Yes, with one small caveat, I think everyone needs soft skills. It doesn't matter where are you in the level, you need soft mm -hmm. skills. In reality, the higher you in the level, you probably already built and understood soft skills because it took you soft skills to get to the point and this could be how do you deal with the argument how do you deal with somebody you potentially don't understand how they think how you understand their the people are different they understand the information differently are more visual audio do they like concise task or they not very organized organized in a different way so by you understanding type of people by you understanding how to deal how to talk to different people you usually help you move inside the company as well because even the moment you start hiring people you cannot hire people the same as you say oh i love the way i am i'm going to hire people only this way it's not really correct because you need people going to look from different perspective and they will mm -hmm. challenge you to understand you're going to the correct way but then we have a different level of soft skills. You can be a leader, but you still not want to do a lot of presentations, for example. You're going to be mm -hmm. an introvert. I'm sorry, not correctly. Everybody can do presentations. Introvert, extroverts, completely wrong. But you will not like to do this. You're going to be totally fine to present to a couple of people in your room, but you don't mm -hmm. want to go and present to a big public. Or vice versa. Or potentially you're going to be okay to present to people, but you don't want to go and create new connections. And actually engage the conversation. So we're all different and it's totally fine. There's no problem with that. But we have a way to have a curiosity and push ourselves out of the comfort zone. And soft skills entitle in my mind to have this curiosity, to have this vulnerability, to open up, to push yourself somewhere to the unknown part, whatever the unknown for you. Certainly, certainly. It's actually it's interesting that you mentioned that because I think not everyone is introspective not everyone so to your point everyone thinks they can do presentations and everyone thinks they're great at doing presentations and you kind know, there are various degrees of uh, of quality of and, and experience in in that regard and often not often sometimes you see people who um it's kind of in the blind spot for them that they need help 
specifically on the soft skills, which I think why your book will be so so helpful. But often the first challenge is to the first the first step is admitting you need help, you, admitting you're like lacking uh, in in certain areas, and you need to build up your your muscle. So here's uh, the with, interesting without, part. With, yeah. without 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 giving away the secret sauce and the punchline in your book, where do you see people? Um, well, get in trouble probably the, the wrong term, but what are the first signs uh, for someone to realize, hmm, well, maybe I need to look myself in the mirror and, and pat myself on the shoulder about all the certificates that I got and all the technical knowledge and experience they have in, uh, under my belt, but realizing what are the first signs for, uh, when people realize maybe they need to read up on something specifically in the soft skill section? I'm going to answer this in a question, but I'll explain as well. When we starting with new company, for example, as a CISO or as a leader, or we are going as a consulting person to a new company, usually what we do, we do a gap assessment. We're trying to understand what's missing, trying to understand what's potentially too much. We do like in an inventory to understand what we have. Same as we're getting a new house. What is the first thing you do with the house? We're doing a house inspection. We're not going right, we understand, do I want to move to the house right away? Or they want to fix stuff. Do they want to renovate the kitchen or have a leaky roof and I need to fix the roof first? So same idea here. Everyone can benefit of improving soft skills. Mm -hmm. The question is, where do you start? And you can do a gap assessment to yourself with mm -hmm. questions. You can do a gap assessment by asking you, 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 you friends. Mm -hmm. In the end of the book, I have something called SSDP. Software skills development plan that help people almost like CISO 30, 60, 90, 120 days how to improve it. Mm. Now, by reading the SSDP, you can see all the different points of improvement in like, hmm, I didn't think about this part. Maybe this is something I want to improve. Now, I am working on a customizable version of the plan when you do a quiz and you understand where to start. I didn't think about doing a quiz to understand, do you need to have a to start as well? It could be a very interesting idea to maybe have 10, 15 questions that will give you a way like, hey, you're good in soft skills, you're like 80 or green. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting idea as well. This episode is brought to you by Athenia, a community where 2000 CISOs and other senior executives network, learn and succeed together. To apply for your complimentary membership, please visit www.afinia.com or click the link in the show notes. Now, back to the show. But the struggle part, I still want to ask, ask you, answer your question, is people that are too confident in some cases, like, oh, no, I know what I'm doing, don't worry, I know everything. This is one example that you probably want to overlook and see what you're doing. Two, people say a lot that the parts you don't like to do, they're probably the parts you need to do. So if you mm. think to yourself, without even asking anyone, what do you prefer to do and what do you avoid to do? Do you like to do one-on-ones with your manager? Do you like to go and present your new ideas? Do you like to talk in a room when somebody asks, hey, what's your opinion, blah, blah, blah? Do you go and present your ideas somewhere else in different conferences? How you, when somebody challenges you to respond very quickly without preparation, would I tell you to record a video about your work? Would you sit down and record it right away? Or it will take you many times because you want to be perfect. Did mm -hmm. you ever analyze your voice? Do you think about how do you ask questions? So all these things that you can understand about yourself, mm -hmm. they will give you an idea. Ah, probably I don't think about that. This is probably what you need to improve without going Interesting. anywhere. Yeah. Interesting. And do you think it's more kind of stage specific if you're just starting as an individual contributor and you 90% uh, of your time is spent in front of a computer writing code or what have you, uh, or staring at dashboards and, um, you, or as you kind of progress in the organization, you start hiring people, you start spending more time in meetings and less time in front of a computer. So is it kind of stage specific? So you need, would you say that you need soft skills more as you, as your career progresses? Or it's not say specific. You need them. Like, what, what's what's so, your take on that? Hard skills is something we learn, like programming skills, like mathematics. Soft skills is very dynamic, and we don't use soft skills 
to deal with computers, at least not right now, I hope we don't. we're using soft skills to deal with other human beings. So mm -hmm. if you are a programmer, but you used to be the president of your school of the newspaper or whatever it is, you probably already have some skills of communication and how to deal with people. But if you never deal with people or you avoided dealing with these people, you're going to need more soft skills mm -hmm. understanding versus you just use calculator, your phone, your computer, and you avoided this human communication, this uncertainty. While computers have bugs and mm -hmm. surprises and blue screens, it's still relatively easy to understand. We know what to do versus feelings, versus emotional intelligence, versus curiosity, vulnerability. It's all something as human we have and we mm -hmm. experience day by day with our friends, with our spouses, with our people we're working with. I understand. I understand. No, it makes a lot of sense. And for uh, uh, readers of the book, is there a way, is there kind of a... And online, other online resources in addition to the book, yeah. uh, you mentioned some of the um, tests or surveys or assessments. Uh, There's a website. There's a website, softskills.tech and softskills.ca, mm -hmm. where majority of the information located. There's going to be blogs there. There's going to be the quizzes there. Everything is slowly getting. The book is relatively young, only mm -hmm. four weeks right now, but we're adding information to the website right now. We're going to add the quizzes. We're going to add the blogs, SSDP, eventually going to be a training as well, because people mm -hmm. told me people learn differently. You know, we all different. Like, hey, I want to read. And I would like to listen as well about, okay, how do I develop empathy? How do I develop active listening? How do I develop my question skills? What do I do with this? How do I train soft skills? What are some of the ideas to train soft skills? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, what was what was this one? Radical honesty. I think one. It's one of the kind of the themes that, uh, out there, which is again. I think the, the the world is divided in how appropriate or how effective it is, but just like one of the themes in terms of giving feedback. Which I, I don't know if you're addressing this or not. But uh, I wonder. So there are kind of two takes. Uh, every organization has technical. Most organizations have technical people, whether on technology side or cybersecurity side. But there is also um, skills on the vendor side. Do you think the book is, um, um, you think the, in terms of the readership, do you see more um, kind of uptake and more readers on the corporate side uh, that, that came up through the ranks uh, in IT or cybersecurity or, and or uh, it's relevant for someone who more in kind of business development or marketing or sales on the vendor side, or maybe both? Right now. Probably the majority of the readers will be on the vendor side. So sales, technical sales, marketing people. Mm -hmm. Having said this, at least half of the book applicable to everyone. We talk about mm -hmm. asking questions. We're talking about how to develop your voice. We're talking about video set up at your home. We're talking about how working with the team in the digital age. We're talking about how to avoid this lack of focus because mm -hmm. what we lost is during physical meetings, we see what everybody is doing. And right now with we in a team and we're talking, I, you may don't have video, maybe have many people. So I don't see the body language. I may be reaching out all the time to the right, but I'm basically writing notes, but you think that I'm eating spaghetti or something like that because you don't <laughs> see what I'm, what I'm doing. So this is applicable to everyone. And there's two chapters that are quite interesting to me because I think they're very important one is what if you're an amazing human being and you're very smart and you're very accomplished, but you're afraid to do a task? You may be okay to present to two people, three people, but now you need to present to 60, 100 people. How do you overcome this fear? How do you calm yourself down? How do you slow your breathing? What do you do in this case? Can you do box breathing? Can you do one, two yoga breathing? Can you do certain physical exercise to normalize yourself? You know, mm -hmm. We're talking a lot about data normalizations, log normalizations, and other industry important topics. Can you normalize yourself? Can you calm down? Can you be present? This is another chapter about burnout. Can you be present to be available eight, 10 hours a day when you have Zoom, Teams, Google Meets after one, after another one, and you will mm -hmm. be consistently present. Your brain will be sharp. You will not be angry. To work with this. This episode is brought to you by Athenia, a community where 2,000 CISOs and other senior executives network, learn, and succeed together. To apply for your complimentary membership, 
please visit www.affinia.com or click the link in the show notes. Now, back to the show. Absolutely. I think it's it's interesting because I think it branches out to so many different other topics from being effective communicator. Uh, soft skills, it's, it's kind of a b- bigger umbrella, but within that, there is communication, there is empathy, there is active listening. There are so many different things around communication, but I think within that, it's not just um, um, to make your, to, to set you up for success in your career, but also to make you more effective in your job, not just looking at the career growth, but making you more productive uh, and accomplishing better outcomes in your current role. But I think part of that, uh, and maybe an adjacent area, uh, is personal branding. And I know there's a handful of uh, CISOs that I see on LinkedIn all the time. Half of my feed is uh, posts of uh, of senior senior executives who take the time and take the effort to structure something that's actually pretty impressive, and they're building. Uh, quite substantial followings uh, as a result. And I think a lot of people are looking at that and saying, well, maybe um, maybe I should do that too. Maybe I, if I find a way to share my thought leadership uh, in a compelling way, maybe I will get promoted. Maybe I'll get a speaking, maybe I'll be a keynote at a conference. Maybe I'll get this consulting opportunity. Uh, maybe I'll write a book. Uh, how do, do you think, how do you think about this adjacency, the the personal brand aspect of being an effective communicator? There's a couple of things here. Why do you want the personal branding? Do you want to be famous in Hollywood? Or are you doing the famous the branding because part of you want to get back, get give, give back to the community? You want to help younger people to get into the industry or potentially people that are in the industry to move to the next level? I think when we doing a lot of work on LinkedIn and become an influencers, all the leaders, we part of our work is actually to help the community to give back. This is what Lisa from my, my point. Of view. Not just mm-hmm. have millions of followers or hundreds of followers just because they want to be famous and make a lot of money. Yes, it's a good goal. I think it's totally fine. But I personally will hope in helping people that reach, reach out to me and mm-hmm. helping people to get in the industry as well. Besides this, if you have ideas and you think they're good ideas to share, why not to share them? And if you're afraid to share them, then reach out to me, to other leaders who will definitely help you to understand what are the baby steps. So here's a couple of things that I learned for myself and my personal story. I have a podcast. I have two podcasts right now, basically. But I was very afraid to start a podcast about cybersecurity. I was very afraid I'm going to be judged. I was very afraid I'm going to say something that is wrong. I'm going to be afraid that my English is not perfect. I'm going to be afraid that people don't understand my accent. And uh, somebody recommended to me, what if you start a podcast that you know the topic really well and you don't really care about what's going to happen with the podcast? I'm like, okay. So I started a podcast about extreme sports. It was in Russian. I was basically saying about what's mountain biking, what's scuba diving, what's whitewater canoeing, what's skiing and snowboarding for me, what does it mean, where do we start? I did like five, six, seven episodes. I don't even know how many people listen to this right now. But it was for me practice. It was for me to be more comfortable with the microphone. And they're like, okay, I can do it. I can, I can do this part. And I moved on and I started with a friend, with Dimitri, the Security Architecture Podcast. But I kind of learned, you know, I did my training before. I didn't learn on the job for delivery. I was learning somewhere else and boosted my conference, confidence, sorry, to actually do the podcast later on. It makes sense. It makes sense. So as you said, baby steps and and um, building blocks, building blocks, be, being comfortable, being vulnerable. So if if uh, being comfortable, being uncomfortable. There you go. That's what I tell my kids all the time. This is awesome. So um, again, without other than going and buying you a book, what's uh, what's number one advice you give people who are looking to develop uh, soft skills? Uh, we spoke about the assessment to yourself. Curiosity, be curious, learn, not just watch a YouTube video and move to the next YouTube video, but actually spend time on the topic you just found out and you want to learn about it. And adapt the 80-20 rules. So 8% of the time you do whatever you did before, and the Mm -hmm. other 20% push yourself out of your comfort zone. 
and do the stuff you're not used to do. So it's still going to be relatively okay. You're not going to go nuts and kind of, oh my God, I'm just doing stuff I don't know. And you're going to mm -hmm. moving up the ladder, up the hill and doing new stuff, discovering new people, meeting new friends, meeting new people that you didn't meet before because you didn't talk their language. You didn't understand what they're doing before. Amazing, amazing. Someone said once, and it kind of stuck with me, everything you ever wanted is right outside of your, of your comfort zone. And I think it was, uh, it was uh, interesting, interesting. Same kind of along the lines of what, you, what you're talking about. Evgeny, thank you so much for taking time for this. This was super cool. Um, you. We will share the link to uh, the Amazon page uh, where people can buy the book. Uh, is there a second book in the works? Or at least are you thinking about what, what, what would be the talk of your second book? Yes, not there's not in the works for sure, too early, but uh, what people told me by reading the book and, and told me basically, even your book is called so Skills for Technical Skills. There is a lot of information for everyone there. So the second book is going to be Soft Skills for Technology People in general. Mm. I think it's applicable to everyone. Some parts will come from this book, some parts going to be new because there are sections mm -hmm. that are not applicable to sales, but definitely applicable to people day by day. Awesome. Can't wait. So uh, again, congrats. So good to see you. Um, great. Maybe we'll, um, we, we host events. So maybe for one of them, we'll, uh, we'll have gift bags for, uh, and get a few books uh, to share well, with uh, a few new members. I'm to present about soft skills in tech in general as well. I think it's a very cool topic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So much. If you like this episode, please subscribe to this channel and visit afenia.com for more information about your complimentary membership or click the link in the show notes.